Michael, you know, I was thinking, like, do you have any recommendations for, like, some really high-quality footwear? Not, like, shoes, but, like, maybe something to go over my foot before it goes into a shoe. Have you ever tried these things called over socks? Used to wear them back in the olden days when they had to ride horses around? No. I haven't either. I have tried Bombas. Bombas? Bombas, the the number one best-selling product in the history of Shark Tank. Tell me more. Well, Bombas was founded because the number one most requested item in homeless shelters was socks. So they went on Shark Tank and pinched it. Not pinch, pitch. That's, that's pitch with a T. And now here we are. Whenever you buy a pair of Bombas, they give one to a homeless shelter. It's a great deal. Plus, there's more. If you use the promo code GCHAD, G-C-H-A-D, you get 0% off your purchase online. You know, I was thinking that if you did use that promo code, you go up and you click the microphone and you enter the promo code GCHAD, which makes no sense. You absolutely get no discount off your order at Bombas. Zero percent on every order. No limit. Well, now that we've got the ad read out of the way, uh, I, did you notice, Michael, that we have a guest today? I did not. I, I heard that we were going to have someone on the show, and I heard that they just got PayPal last week. And it really creeped me out, so here we are. Okay, well, speaking of just getting PayPal last week, we will introduce our guest who did just get PayPal and refuses to use Venmo. Our guest this week is Todd. Hello, Todd. Hello, it's a pleasure to be on a podcast viewed by maybe 10 to 20 people. It's It's a pleasure. We're international, Todd. He's got a point. We do have a international, but... Still seven to maybe 18 listeners. It's my pleasure. We've been pleasure sitting there waiting to get in a jab at our audience. Um, I've been planning it for a while, ever since I was asked to be on. Okay. Yeah. Figured. Uh, well, that's our show for this month. Uh, <laughs> not really. <laughs> Thanks to our special guest, Todd, for ruining this entire operation. This is the series finale of <laughs> Group Chat After Dark. Thanks, everybody. Not. Um, well, if I'm on it, today, then that, that means it's we're only going to have like one less viewer. So we may have six viewers. He's got a well, point. You're not going to listen? Well, I'm on it. Why would I listen if I'm on it? I always listen. I know what happened. That, that's just to increase the, view, the listeners. Well, how many times have you played the same video game over and over? Ah, oh, nice segue. Hmm, yes. Because today we are talking about the great debate. I don't know how great it is amongst any other group of friends, but in our group of friends, it has been discussed a lot recently. What's better, Red Dead Redemption or Red Dead Redemption 2? There's strong opinions on it. Very good opinions on both sides. Are we going to specify the difference between online and single player, or is it just a overall... We do, I, as far as my notes, uh, I know Michael has no notes prepared. He's just here to cause chaos. Um, I have it broken down by Red Dead Redemption, Red Dead Redemption 2, and then Red Dead Online. So I'm treating them as three separate games. I got you. I have no notes, and I've only played Red Dead like twice. So, <laughs> so your input here is invaluable, and we cannot wait to hear your insights. <laughs> But that is the reason we have Mr. Todd on, because of our in our group chat, the resident Red Dead expert is you. And we need to hear your thoughts on these things. Well, where would you like to start? With the original, I suppose? Yeah, I figured uh, we could start there. I've got a couple, just a couple little notes here about, uh, you know, Red Dead kind of setting the stage. It was uh, released, Red Dead Redemption was released for Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 on May 18th of 2010. That's right, 10 years ago this game was released, a little over 10 years now. 
Starring Jason Statham. False. Um, <laughs> there, it's already starting. Um, when this development for the development for Red Dead or the Redemption, the original began, it was in 2005. So they worked on it for about five years before it was released with a team of about 800 people. Um, interestingly enough, something I did not know was it was scheduled to be released on April in April of 2010, but they delayed it one more month just for a little bit more polish. And the point of the game, they, they kind of knew they were going to lose some money on it because it was very expensive at the time. It was one of the most expensive video games ever developed. Um, they were pretty sure they were going to lose some money on it, but they wanted to prove how talented the, the, the developer was, Rockstar San Diego. Uh, so take two, the parent company was like, let's, we're just, we might lose money, but we're going to show how talented this studio is. And, uh, actually in the first three weeks, it sold over 5 million copies, which was way past what they needed to, to make their money back. So it was quite a success right off the bat. And Todd, you really enjoyed it. I did really enjoy it. Yes. It was the first time for me that a story uh, in a video game was so compelling. Uh, and, um, the multiplayer, of course, we'll get to that, but the, the storyline of, uh, you know, having a Western game, what I thought was the first time that had really been done successfully. Um, of course, you know, spoiler alert, we'll, uh, you know, John Marston, uh, he dies. Whoa. Wow. Tragically. What? What? We... <laughs> what? I said spoiler alert. I said spoiler. We're less than seven minutes into this thing. Uh, and it's ruined. It was ruined before we started. <laughs> well, no, but seriously. Okay. Well, do, do, we need, do we need to go back in time and talk about the first Red Dead game in the series? No, we don't need to do that. Red Dead Revolver? I mean, I mean John, if you have notes but, on it, we can. I, I didn't do anything. Did you play Red Dead I, Revolver? I don't. I don't. I mean, I'll, the only thing I'll say is that I, I think Rockstar has said that um, that was a. Uh, uh, it wasn't really based on Red Dead Revolver. It wasn't like a, a second. It was just kind of like a spiritual uh, successor you know, uh, to it. It wasn't anything. Yeah, but there are things in the game that that actually do throw back to. Um, Red Dead Revolver, but nothing serious that, you know, links to the story. So it's like Fast and the Furious and then Hobbs and Shaw. They live in the same universe. But they're different they're, things. No, because one franchise is really good and the other franchise is garbage. Trash garbage. I've only seen like the first two Fast and Furious, so I don't have, I don't know what Hobbs and Shaw is. That's a rock movie with The Rock. And Jason Statham. See, it's all connected. <laughs> <laughs> Look how proud he is. <laughs> also, I guess we should point out the elephant in the room. Michael's just sitting right over there. Hey, hey buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I had to pawn all of my audio equipment for cash. Oh. There nice he was. mask. Thank you. Mask. Social distancing. You have to wear a mask yeah, when social distancing is not. Ah. Uh. Anyway, okay. So we're talking about Red Dead. Yes, Red Dead Revolver was a spiritual, or Red Dead Redemption was a spiritual successor to Red Dead Revolver. Um, and anyway, let's let's go back to Todd because he is the important one here, not you, Michael, with your Fast and Furious talk. Todd, you have the floor. Underrated. I mean, I'd really like to talk about Hobbs and Shaw. I don't know what that is. We should. So we're, so we're, I've you, lost control. I've lost control. <laughs> what did you expect was going to happen? <laughs> um, you so, are not the father. This is the greatest day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Why didn't you put that on when I came over there? I don't know. Does that have a pattern on it, or is that just your... Run-of-the-mill surgical mask. It's just your run-of-the-mill surgical mask. Oh, it's disposable. Is that coffee stains? What is that? Is it? I don't know. I don't know. It's just wrinkly. It's in my uh, pocket. I see. All right, so 
Ben doesn't get mad at us, we'll talk about Red Dead Redemption. I'm mad. The first it's one. too late. <laughs> so, Ben made an interesting point. Back in the day, they used to develop games at Rockstar using dedicated studios, right? Yeah. And this one was San Diego? It was. Got it. That will change later. We'll, we'll get into that. Yeah. Foreshadowing. So as far as as far as the first Red Dead, um, I know when I finished it and what made it so nice to me and so um, wonderful, and I've already spoiled it for everyone um, that the main character does pass. But you played this whole game for months and months. You get so attached to someone, and then you they get murdered right in front of you. And I remember when it happened to me when I, we were first when I first played it. I told Ben, I think I called him or texted him or something, and I was like, have you finished this game yet? He said, no. I said, you have to call me the second you finish this game because it is unlike any other thing I've ever played. So that, that I think that since that was the, the first time that it happened in a game, and I mean, it was I, you know, I was crushed, absolutely crushed. And he, that is, I can attest to that is a true story. He told me, you got to call me when you finish this. It was a few days later. I did finish it, and I, I just remember sitting there kind of with my head in my hands, shocked after it was over. And I didn't know what to do. And I was like, well, I have to call Todd. So I got up and I was so I was so shaken <laughs> by this ending that I got up, I went outside on the patio of the townhouse I was living in at the clubhouse, and I lit a cigarette and I called Todd to just cope with these fans. And we probably, it was probably one of the longest phone conversations he and I'd ever had at the time, <laughs> just talking about the ending of the video. It's about a fictional character. <laughs> Well, see, it, it, you took the whole game to get his freaking family back. Like, the whole game was getting his family back. You get his family back, everything's wonderful, and then fucking Edgar Ross shoots him in the face. Like, <laughs> like it, was, it was traumatizing. It was horribly traumatizing. Well, and it, and I felt like I wasted. That was not the norm for, you know, Rockstar Games. You know, they're, they're big, their claim to fame was uh, Grand Theft Auto. You know, I guess still really is, but... Uh, the, the the games would you could finish the story, but then you could just keep playing them forever and do whatever you wanted, and you were always playing as the same character. So they really kind of broke the mold on this one, and so you just you know you're just I was as a as a rock star fan was pre- prepared to just continue goofing off and hunting with John Marston, and then the end of the story comes, you're like, what? <laughs> now what do we do? Is is the game really over? And then you learn what you learn. Yeah. Should the game have ended outside of that barn and not had the epilogue attached? That's a good question. I I, I never really enjoyed playing with Jack at all. I mean, (laughs) it was still the game, but, you know, we make fun of the stuff he would say when he was on the horse. I mean, we still make fun of that. Um, Work your damn nag. The only thing, work your damn nag. Um, the only thing that I liked about that was, you know, you got, to, you had that stranger, well, it wasn't a stranger mission, but it was that where you got to actually go and kill Edgar Ross later. That was the only, like, it could have ended right there for me and I would have been fine. I could, cause you can do everything to get 100% with John pretty much. I think, I don't know that for sure, but I think, I think um, so. Yeah. I don't, I mean, unless that one mission is, is part of it, but I don't think it is. Um, so you I mean you can do everything you need to without it. So it would have been fine with me if it would have ended right there. I agree. I, I I think it would have been cool, but I at the same time, I don't know why. But at the end, the the true end, because you think it's over, and then you go down there and you you know you do that. Um, once Jack finishes his mission and he turns and walks away, that the way that comes up and says Red Dead Redemption. Like, you know, it kind of does that wipe where, like, you see Jack and Nick says, I don't know why, I just thought that was so cool that even though it was kind of a trudge with Jack and, it, you know, I didn't necessarily like playing with him, I thought it was really cool the way that, that ended. And it's like, okay, now the credits roll and the game's actually over. So I, I thought it was, I didn't feel good about it, but it was kind of a badass uh, little scene there once it was said and done. Yeah. I think they Rockstar's done a fantastic job with all the artwork for both games. I mean, 
every every aspect of it I've I've, I've always enjoyed all you know everything that they've done with that. Yeah, and now, you really became comparing, the rock star fanboy after Red Dead. Like you were all in on Rockstar after Red Dead came out. Well, see, I never played fully through it. Grand Theft Auto game. I was always the Saints Row. I always enjoyed them. I mean, I, you know, they were fun. Johnny Gat and the gang, you know. Um, but <laughs> um, Red, once I played Red Dead, yeah, I was hooked. And I think that may be why I like it so much, too. That was my first experience with Rockstar and how immersive their stuff is. Yeah, and they changed a lot for that. They, I mean, they. I remember we used to get together, all of us would get together and watch those, like, gameplay series videos that they released. Um, just kind of showing, like, the development process. And it's, in the world of Red Dead Redemption, like, I used to love watching those. So, oh yeah, uh, those are always fun to watch. And was that not one of the biggest maps in a game to date when it was released? I don't know. I mean, it definitely was big, but I, it was huge. Yeah, I think I don't know if it was the biggest map in the, in the game or uh, of games, but I think it definitely took you the longest to traverse because mm. <laughs> you were on horseback or yeah. on foot. Um, so I don't know, but I don't know. I don't know what where. It, it ranked their map size. So, can we compare the store, single player story in the first one, Red Dead Redemption, with Red Dead Redemption Two? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. I mean, hey, this we're. I, I've got a few notes here to supplement things. This is your show because this is this is your area of expertise. So, however you want to progress, we will. Well, so obviously the the first single player, just the story was, you know. Um, this outlaw who was trying to um, you know get his family back and get his life back to normal, and then the the second one was kind of the story of him running in the in a gang that you know in the first one he was tasked with hunting down uh, his former gang members so that he could have that life uh, you know with his family uh, you know leading a normal life. So in the in the second one it was it, you know they go back show everything that he was doing with that gang and kind of the, how it fell apart. Um, and you actually played with a, another person who was Arthur Morgan, which um, I know me and Ben have talked about this. Michael, I'd like your opinion on this a little bit. Which, which character did you enjoy playing with more, Arthur Morgan or John Marston? That's a good question. I enjoyed playing, I think, playing with Arthur more. Um... I think John's focus was very, very singular, and he didn't have the depth that Arthur ended up having. Although it's close. Is uh, do you think that? What about like the person themselves? Because like I know I enjoy playing with Arthur more just because of the graphics and you know it's just the new console and all that. But um, I th I still think John may be nostalgia, but I, I don't know. <laughs> Well, see, I feel like John. with John, you're always doing stuff with the end goal of getting the family back. Uh, and with Arthur, while you're playing through, you really don't know what the end goal is. Uh, because of the way he doesn't really have any close relationships. You know, he might be still fully in the gang. He might be out of the, out of the gang. It's hard to tell. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point, because that was definitely like... You know, all you go through all through the original Red Dead. Of course, Red Dead Two set before the original. It's a prequel, so you go all the way through Red Dead, and you never hear Arthur's name mentioned. There's plenty of other characters that are mentioned, you know, throughout that story from from this time, but Arthur's never mentioned. So, for me, I think that was the biggest kind of draw with with Arthur was like, well, what's what's going to happen to you? I mean, Arthur's got to die, right? Like, or, or you know, is he going to like? everybody thinks he's dead and he's you know i just wondered how they were going to end that with him because nobody ever talked about him he was never mentioned once in the original red dead so where does he go what happens to him so yeah i think when i was playing it i kind of knew that something was going to happen you know that he was going to die and then you know of course the scene where he's in san denis and he's walking through and he gets that coffin fit i'm like oh here we go something's up which you I, actually I, sent me a message when we were playing that, yeah. I yeah I I I gotta say that was I was very surprised uh, <laughs> the the way it all ended up for him. I was not expecting that. So no, 
No, I had a bunch of ideas in my head, and that was not even remotely close to any of them. <laughs> so, do um, uh, I, I was curious, um, and not to, uh, just just how you guys feel about the stories, um, both of them, not not really the gangs themselves, but what was going on in those two worlds at the time, like. Um, you know, they always, Rockstar always talks about, you know, how the, um, it was, the West was being settled and, you know, I see a lot of similarities now with what was going on in those worlds, especially, um, politically and things like that. Have you guys noticed that kind of, those kind of similarities? Yeah, for sure. Especially in Red Dead, the, the Red Dead Redemption. Yeah. Um, right. When it's, I guess, I guess, I guess that was set in what, 1899, I think. Something uh, like that. I think ni- 1910 was the, the Red Dead Redemption was like 1910, I think. Okay, yeah. So it was shortly before the automobile became like widespread. And uh, I really liked the involvement in the first Red Dead where you could go into into Mexico and, and stuff down there. Um, that the, yeah. the second Red Dead really didn't get into. It did introduce some new places, but... Uh, I felt like the like the conflict between all the you know Javier Escuela and all those guys in the first one was a lot different. And I definitely like having played. I played Red Dead Redemption the first one a, a couple times through. I think at least twice. Um, and and a, a big point in that storytelling was you know the West was the Wild West was on the way out. Gunslingers were on the way out. Um, and I recently replayed the first mission of Red Dead 2 to try and get like a gold medal or whatever I forget, you know, on, on the mission. And it played through that whole opening sequence again. And it talks about, um, you know, the West being tamed, uh, it, it, that, that kind of thing again. And I was like, I, I just, I don't know. It, for some reason, that didn't really stick with me throughout. Because, I mean, I guess with as much as you do, it doesn't really feel like it's tamed. Uh, because it's, you're still kind of wild, but I guess the point is that not everybody's still behaving this way. Um, so, uh, it definitely was something that kind of was brought back front of mind when I, I, I replayed that again. And I would like to f- officially announce, uh, Todd does know this, but I, I was saving the, the official announcement for the podcast. I have officially, as of last week, attained 100% in Red Dead Redemption 2, finally, after... The last several weeks of, of going for that goal, I have done it. Nice. Which you is are a chore. A level seven nerd. <laughs> well, I, I was telling Todd, I, it popped up on my Xbox screensaver or whatever and was like, oh, you're at like 89%. You know, I'm like, oh man, I didn't know I was that close. I'll just do that. Uh, you know, I can probably knock that out tonight. I had no idea with the game the size of Red Dead 2 how much was left to do. As it was probably about a month from the time that I noticed that to where I actively started working on it a little bit every day. And I finally finished it last week. So there's a lot packed into that game. I mean, so that is an interesting thing to point out. Because like I think about back to Red Dead, the first Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption, versus Red Dead 2 it felt like Red Dead 2 was a lot more built out and like the, the cities were more advanced and stuff than it was in Red Dead 1. And I get a lot of that's probably due to console, but you would think that they would have kept that in mind when they built Red Dead 2 and the way things were going to look, you know? I don't know. I know what you mean, especially like Blackwater. Yeah. Like when I when I go through Blackwater in Red Dead 2, I'm like, this this, this city is much more advanced than the one the, the, the in, in the first one. And it's same thing with like, obviously Tumbleweed, but Tumbleweed obviously, you know, collapses or uh, in, in, in the original Red Dead. But I, I thought the same thing. And I guess it's just one of those things you got to, I guess, uh, chalk suspension up, like of disbelief. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause that, that's my beef with uh, prequels, especially with when it comes to games. Because there's so many, you know, especially when it's on a different console, there's so many more advancements um, as far as, like, the mechanics in the game and stuff. And it's like, it, it, I don't know, it, 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 it makes it harder for me 
to suspend my disbelief because I'm like, well, I couldn't do this in the first game, and that's set in the future. Um, but that's just me being a dick. It's okay to be a dick, man. It's how Michael lives well. his life. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, uh, what do you think was the most significant revelation that you learned in Red Dead Two that you didn't know about in Red Dead One? I uh, I liked hear, hearing the story about the um, uh, the the casino boat that went down because that's kind of what started uh, the mm. big demise of the Vanderlyn gang. Um, and they don't really go that detailed into it, that just that, it, you know, it, something bad happened. And then, of course, you find out later on that there was a, a rat, and the rat was kind of... Well, the rat actually comes up later when they come back from Guarma, but it, it, it just showed that their way of life was not going to, you know, last. I guess, and so, and you hear about it the whole time. Uh, you hear about that, and you know the um, all the other stuff that that happens to John, like when uh, when Dutch doesn't save him um, on the train. Um, you hear about all that stuff, and seeing all that stuff, you know, in real time or playing it, that that was probably my favorite part, or what I didn't know really. Yeah, I for me i think it was kind of along the same lines i was enthralled with the character of dutch like when you finally meet him in red dead he was nuts like but i, I was really i was like i don't know i was kind of drawn to him i was like I, I, every scene he was in it's kind of almost like the joker in dark knight like every time he was on screen i'm like i gotta really pay attention here and listen to this guy because he you know something's gonna happen um so i was really just intrigued by him and then to see him actually be this like respected leader and not this kind of raving madman that he's essentially, you know, he's, he's more of a cult of personality in uh, Red Dead Redemption. But to see him, like, actually seem to care about the people. But then there's these little twinges of madness. Like, you know, uh, they're, they're talking at one point, Javier's telling John, like, uh, or he's telling Arthur, rather. Sorry, I'm mixing them up. Javier mentions to Arthur that back there on the boat, like, Dutch just kind of murdered a woman uh and Arthur's like well that's that's not like him and you know so to kind of see like around him how everybody's starting to notice oh he Dutch is like starting to lose his his grip and uh I don't know I just thought that was really interesting so that was I'd say that for me just seeing it seeing Dutch as a respected somewhat capable leader and then kind of inch closer to that just all in it for himself and getting people to be his do his bidding basically yeah dutch a master manipulator though i mean absolutely i mean to a t and, he, and he's so personable too like the voice actor does such a good job with you know obviously all the voice actors do a fantastic job in this game but they just, I mean, just makes him, I mean, I wanted to follow him there a couple times. I'm like, yeah, let's do this. Like, let's rob this bank, you know? But it, but you obviously know that he's he's losing it, like you, know, like you said, killing innocent people all over the place. And speaking of losing it, Red Dead 2 almost lost me in Guarma. I'm glad you said that. Todd brought it up earlier, and I was sitting on it, but that was absolute garbage. <laughs> I... I was not prepared for it. I was like, okay, cool, you got me. I wasn't ready for this, but I, I was really worried about how long that was going to go on. Like, I was just ready. To, I was like, I need to get back to, to the heartlands here. I need to get back to Valentine. I do not want to be on this island. That was rough. That was rough. But I I didn't mind it. As, I think I don't think as much as y'all did, but still, it was it was when it, when it happened, I was like, yeah, this needs to... Hurry up in the end quickly. <laughs> I just feel like the plausibility with the rest of the story was just so off base. It was. It didn't make much sense. Yeah. And that that was for me. I think it was just, I was like, you know, I get it's unexpected. Like, I already felt a little weird about the city of St. Denis, like, being so advanced and being this kind of metropolis. Like, 
because you know Blackwater and their their other game was the big city. And I guess you know get it. It's a smaller scope, but oh, we got a wild baby loose. Um, but to go then see Saint Denis, like this place is is way advanced, and it just didn't. I don't know. I was like, that eh, feels a little weird. I don't spend a lot of time there because of that. Um, but yeah, then to be like, okay, that was unexpected to see like a rail car and all this, you know, or a, a trolley and. And this this big advanced civilization, it was unexpected, and I was okay. But then, also unexpected to to get shipwrecked on an island, you know. And and it it was kind of reminiscent of in Mexico with um, Abraham Reyes, like you know, because the revolution type stuff that was going on uh, on this particular island. But I don't know. Maybe maybe if I play through it again, I say if because it's so long. Um, if I play through it again, maybe I'll spend a little more time in Guarma because I. I'm not gonna lie. I rushed right through that one. Uh, I, I did as many Guarma missions as I could in one sitting because, like, I, I do not want to stay here. Apparently, so, there's a bird there that you have to, if you want to, like, investigate all the birds and you know add to the compendium. Then there's one bird there that you have to get. I think it's like a toucan or something. But anyway, yeah. Interesting. I think I got that on accident. Like, it may have, yeah. Like, he woke up, and there was a bird, so I shot it, and then it was good. Because that's, that's kind of how you live your life. If something walks up, you shoot it. <laughs> shoot first, ask questions later. I'm an outlaw. <laughs> My honor was, like, as far this way as you could get. See, that's something with that actually kind of bothered me about Red Dead 2 was the, I know that that was a, a big selling point for rock stars, you could do both. But to me, the bad, I, I don't know, I, I was super good, like the whole time. Like I do bad stuff here and there, but for the most part, I was, you know, I was good. I had the buck scenes, you know, not the wolf. And, you know, I never had the, the encounter with the um, the lady. Well, uh, well there was a bad, um, uh, you know what I'm talking about, where he was, he had the, uh, talk with the nun and then yeah. if you were bad he had to talk with the priest in his group and I can't remember his name but like I never had to do with any of that but it was just weird to me where he was so Arthur was so personable he was so you know he wanted to do the right thing he was kind of the opposite or starting to be the opposite of Dutch and he would go out and kill a whole town like I never I never but I know that they're they're outlaws but I, I guess what I'm trying to say is it didn't fit sometimes to me and that that was my biggest complaint with Red Dead's story was John, you know, post gang, uh, really wanted to, to be a good person. He was done. He was done with being an outlaw. He was he was a rancher now, but the government ropes him into this stuff, and he doesn't want to hurt anybody, and he doesn't want to do. And he says all this, and then you know you're like. I don't want to hurt nobody. And you go into a, the, the cut scene and then all of a sudden it's like, there's, here comes the army and he slaughters them all. <laughs> like, yeah, it just, it was like, and I get it. I mean, it would be a really boring game if you could get through it, I guess, without having to kill anybody. Um, you know, but it, it just, it, it felt like I was like, he, he wants to be a good guy. He doesn't want to kill anybody, but then he has no problem just dead eyeing people, people, you know, as 20 people in 12 seconds mowing through them. And then, most often, when you'd finish one of those missions, you'd cut to John smoking a cigarette, very <laughs> casually, <laughs> like, ah, <laughs> very satisfied. <laughs> so, Just murdered 30 people. <laughs> well, and the funny thing about that is, I normally try to be <laughs> as evil as I can in video games. And with Red Dead 2, you still, at the end, he's going to have an honorable ending. No matter what you try to do. Did you think that playing it as the bad guy, it fit more with the story than playing it good? Or I don't, you didn't, I don't think you played it good, but I, did you think it fit playing it bad? Um. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, if I'm going to be an outlaw, then I'm going to be an outlaw. If that makes sense. Right. He's all Rather than try, to, than try to be a good outlaw. That Like, that's an oxymoron. If he's yeah. going to be an outlaw, well, he's balls deep an outlaw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see what you're saying. 
I don't know. To me, when I was when I was playing it, like stuff, stuff what Arthur would say would make me think that he's not gonna do this. And then yeah, you know, I, t- I talk with you, and you're like, well, no, I did that. And I was like, <laughs> well, I mean, I, you know, I, I get I get you wanting to play it that way, but to me, it just didn't it didn't fit Arthur to play it bad. But I, I mean, I suppose it's all in what you wanted to do. Well, and I think too, like I think that's the direction the game wanted me to go, and I had to fight it actively to not go that direction yeah i'm sure you did if you're like no no we need to we need you to be a little nicer and you're like nah. no i would tie up the cops and feed them to the alligators you know oh I, yeah i did that to a point if somebody would like if i was riding along and somebody would knock me off my horse or something i'd totally murder <laughs> them absolutely like how dare you I would. I played it mostly good, but I would have those little moments every now and then that I would like something. I'd be riding along and be like, "There's nobody around. I could. I could just murder this guy." And, and you know, like just it, it was like when you make some make a kid behave for so long, all of a sudden they're just gonna rip something apart and they don't know why. That was that was kind of me. I would have these little moments of like, "All right, I, I just gotta." I gotta senselessly murder something, and then I'll be good. I'll be back to being good, you know. My honor won't go down, but just a little bit. So, yeah, just little outlets, I guess, for my rage. <laughs> sure. So, um, I think the real uh, point of uh, controversy with us, um, I think we both, we all, we all look, enjoyed look, the look single at, player. Look at Michael's face because he so, knows he what knows. you're about to say. And he is so happy because I've, the 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 uh, anyway he's just gonna pile shit all over this so he's ready. Well, and, and I don't necessarily disagree with him, but we'll, we'll get to it. Um, so we we all agree that the, the Red Dead One was great, great storyline. We enjoyed the multiplayer, the gang matches. Um, of course, there wasn't as much stuff to do in, in the the multiplayer free runs as it is in this new one. Um, but let's get. Let's, let's start with Michael's thoughts on the Red Dead Online uh, for this new generation of, or the current generation, I suppose. Well, I think I, th- I think a good thing to, to talk about, too, is Fortnite, which came out prior to this game and really showed how much people are willing to spend money endlessly in these video games for these video game companies. And uh, I think Rockstar is certainly on that bandwagon, which they did discover prior to Fortnite with GTA Online, that people will spend actual cash money in a video game to gain level and weapons and advancements without having to work for it. Right. So I think Red Dead, Red Dead Online, the Red Dead Redemption 2 version of Online, is purely based on that. They're just trying to make money off of you. That's it. So I thought about this a lot um, since this came out and we decided we were going to do this. It, do you remember the first multiplayer on Red Dead when they would have a uh, they would have a release for a new... It was just basically an update for online. You know, you got new game matches and you got all this stuff and they charged money for it. You remember mm-hmm. that? It was like yeah. 30 bucks or 40 right. bucks. Um this one, obviously, they're you know you're getting these drip feeds of of updates. You know you're getting you know like the naturalist here a month ago, and then each week you're getting a new one. Which we'll get to that too. That because yeah. So, but the, I guess the point of a, a you know, and I'm not saying anything you guys don't already know, but you know the point of these businesses is to make money and, <laughs> and have people play the games. There's two things: play the game, make money. So the first one, people were obviously playing your game. But where were you making money? So they needed to. They did these updates. And they charge you for it. The second one, people are kind of playing your game. It was in beta. They weren't really playing. Um, they were a little bit, but most people were waiting. Um, and then you want to have them make money, or you they want to you want to make money as a company. So you have the gold, the the, the shark cards like in GTA. So. To get the people to play regularly, you have these daily challenges where you get on and make sure that people are in your game every day. So it's killing, you know, two birds with one stone in a sense, where you know you're having you're having people play and you're also making money that they, they, they you know and that you can buy gold. So I get why they do it. It is a horrible pain in the ass, <laughs> but I get why they do it. 
I mean, you're, they're a business, and you know, there's nothing we can do about that. But well, I guess the whole crux of the matter for me is if you're going to play a game online, that means you usually want to play with other people, and the things that Rockstar has put out for Red Dead Redemption Two online have all been single player options for ninety percent of it, right? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I mean, that's what makes me the angriest is I was really excited because I don't really play a ton of video games for myself, just by myself playing playing by myself. And so I was really excited to get to play online, but there's almost nothing to do as a group. Like one time we got on there and we rode to, I don't remember the name of the place, but to look at the whale bones. And that, that, that was what we did for two hours one night. <laughs> yeah. And, and we've talked about this a lot. You know, if, if we get on together, we want to, we want to rob banks. We want to rob trains. We want to ride. We want to be in a, in a gang. Like, you know, yeah. that's what we want to do. We don't want to fucking pick flowers and <laughs> uh, sample animals. Like, like, have you seen the newest update in this thing? You you can turn into a rabbit. <laughs> I want to fucking oh, turn into yeah. a rabbit or I, a deer. I, I actually, I saw the thing about that where you can you can develop this connection to the animals. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I haven't done it yet, but, yeah. I but saw they, somebody online. That was, was in GTA, about though. That was in GTA oh, 5 as well. <laughs> There was, um, it was the single player that you could go take, like, it wasn't peyote or something, or maybe it was, it was like... Oh, the aliens. You could go find, like, these little peyote plants and eat them, and it would, it would, you'd trip out and be in the body of a wolf or a, a, a deer or, like, all these different, and I think ultimately, I can't remember what the, I think one of them maybe was a Sasquatch, like, there was all these, like, levels of, like, trips that you could have. Um, so I guess they just, they were like, Hey, or maybe somebody really liked it and requested it on Twitter. And Rockstar was like, you know what? We should bring back, you know, the, the being an animal thing. That was a lot of fun, but I haven't done it in Red Dead. Well, I, I didn't do it just out of principle because you know, <laughs> I'm not, I don't More want to go on there to, to, yeah, I'm not going on there to, to turn into a, uh, fucking rabbit. But uh, did you see, um, <laughs> Because, you, you know, there's a lot of people that are just mad about the lack of content on this game. Uh, like, y- yes, just, I'm one of those. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I, I'm sure y'all saw where people were dressing up as clowns to protest rocks are not doing anything. And then they give us the naturalist update where we can go and sample animals and take it to some woman who, if we kill an animal, she's going to spray us with some shit that throws us, I mean, like, it's just, it's so stupid, like, just trying well, to, just talk, saying it out loud, just so stupid. And not to mention, you have to have 400 gold to even play the naturalist to get the equipment it's not that to much. be a naturalist. <laughs> but it is a lot. What was it, like, 50? I think it's 25. It was, like, it was 40 or something, yeah, or, or, I forget, it was something like that. So, if it was 50, just to give people an idea about the in-game <laughs> economy, if, if it was 50, and you got to 28 on your daily challenges where you get a half a gold for each challenge. If you were at 28, it would take you 25 days doing t- two <laughs> challenges if you don't to know, pay for it. To be at 28, that means you for the last 28 days in a row, you have gotten on and done daily challenges. So for the last month, yes. you've played Red Dead Online every day and achieved something to get to that point. <laughs> right. Which, if you, if you have, I mean, some of them don't take a long time to get. Some of them do. I mean, some of them's like, eat five, you know, uh, mushrooms. Like, you can do that in, a, in two seconds, and you're done, you get off. But, you know, if you have the time to do it, I understand wanting to do it. And, like I said, it goes back. People are in there, they're playing it every day. They're going in there to do that. Not a lot, I'm sure not a lot of people do that. But, I'm sure some people do. And then, if you don't want to do that, you can just... Pay the fifty bucks and get yourself a hundred gold bars, and there you are. Well, the other issue too is GTA Five or GTA Online came out in what 2012? 20, 2012, 2013, something like that. They are still putting out content for that almost monthly right. on a eight year old game, but they don't put out nearly the same amount of content for the new game. That could make the same amount of money that broke the record of GTA 5. Uh, actually, 
in my notes here, I have, um, as far as Red Dead's release, um, it was the largest, largest opening weekend in the history of entertainment, is what they said. Uh, so that's like movies, TV. Yes, because they changed it. See, the, the way things used to be, games weren't considered part of like box office and things like that because the games were released. I don't know why this is the way it was, but games were always released on Tuesdays. New games came out on Tuesdays. Those were the launch days for whatever reason. Um, so it couldn't count as a weekend box office because it wasn't on the weekend. So recently, in the last few years, they've shifted to releasing games on Fridays. And now they can consider it a, a, an opening weekend, basically. Um, so that was that was Rockstar's claim to fame here was, oh, this is the biggest opening weekend ever because a movie ticket doesn't cost $60. After Fast and the Furies. <laughs> but, having said that, uh, so that they had the biggest opening weekend, but... It said it was the second highest grossing launch of a game. Only behind Grand Theft Auto V. Ah. Uh. So while Rockstar had the... Or while Red Dead 2 had the biggest opening weekend in the history of entertainment, it still wasn't the biggest launch of a oh, game. Got it. I guess as far as, you know, profit. Well, then that also points to, why are they still trying to make money off of Joe Schmo? When they've got billions of dollars coming in the door. I actually looked at a, I read an article about um, their stock this past, um, this past quarter or a couple quarters ago. And it wasn't that great. Um, I don't know if you can contribute that to uh, the pandemic, uh, which you would think that people would be playing games more so, but um it was not as good as you would think it would have been. But if you think about having a, you know, GTA have, has been out for however many years it's been out. Red Dead's been out not as long. I would think that you you have an opportunity there to put out a bunch of new stuff for Red Dead in this year. I mean, people are still, there's still people not going out, still people playing video games. I would think that you would have an opportunity there to give the game some stuff, give something people... You know, to spend their money on, not just uh, turn it into a fucking rabbit like we talked about earlier. Like that's just like if you yeah if, if, worthwhile if, stuff if, exactly. And I think a yeah. lot of that has to do with um, like we're I think we're in the minority of gamers in that we play the same okay, game. old. <laughs> there you go. We play the same game for a long time. If you're like a, right. a true gamer, or and, and like streamers do this, they they play what's new and hot because that's what gets you views, you know. So you don't buy a game like Red Dead Two and play it for years. You get through it, and then you might come back to it every now and then. But there's always something new to play. So I think we're kind of we're on the the you know other side of that Venn diagram where it's, we we buy a game, we've invested in it, and we play that game. And keep playing that game, and you know we. I mean, how two years later we'll still get on and play Red Dead every now and then online. Um, so I think that's that that has something to do with it too. It's that people have moved on. I think people. I think it hurt Red Dead Online the fact that online didn't launch when the game did, because people got you know that if you're if you're a streamer if you're a gamer well a month there's two or three other games that have probably come out by then and you've moved on. And you'd be like, oh yeah, I could go back and jump online, but you you might be more invested in like uh, Apex Legends or you know something, whatever came out in the interim of that month that you weren't playing that game. Um, so I, I think that 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 didn't help their cause, um, but I, I don't know. I'm sure numbers would probably reflect. That's just my opinion on it. Is that to to wait? And I, they learned that with GTA Five or GTA Online. You know, they, they, they didn't launch it right away. They waited, and it still had problems. And same kind of thing here. They waited, and it still had some issues, and still does have some issues, frankly. Um, but I, I think it's just w with gamers now, you gotta you got to strike while the iron's hot, or they're going to move on. And yeah. I, th I think they lost a lot of 
it, it wasn't the money maker that it could have been if they had launched online at the same time. That again, that's all just my thoughts on it. Yeah. Well, if you're a kid, or you know, uh, I mean, you hear all these stories about like Fortnite, you know, um, uh, what, what's the battleground? P P B PUBG. I think yeah, that, PUBG. Yeah. So like you know you got these kids that play these games they're not going to come and play Red Dead online and you know take their parents credit cards and you know buy all the skins you know you know they're not going to do that with Red Dead like you said like Michael said if if we get on we're not going to go as a group and go pick the the collector stuff like we're not going to do that like why would we get together and do that and they've that, nerfed it and a, you can't even do it if you wanted to well, you can still do it. There's a website out there, uh, the Gene Roki website, um, that you can, they've mapped it out, but it's still a pain in the butt. I did it last weekend and, you know, it took me like two months when it did take me like a weekend. But anyway, um, you, you, they're just not going to do that. So, I mean, I, I get what, what Ben's saying about, you know, um, uh, what, what you just said, but I think that if if they gave it some time and actually did had some things that you could do as a group, that would greatly greatly help it. But I don't know if they will. And I know you've looked into it. They you, they're saying there's more coming. They're hoping maybe even this year to add some more, right? There, that's correct. There there's gonna be one. There's gonna be a Halloween update. Um, that from what I can tell. I don't know if it's going to be anything worthwhile. I mean, I think there's a new um, zombie thing coming. Um, they've found in the files of the game, like, um, characters and stuff, yeah. Um, and they're going to do another um, uh, outlaw pass. But it's I saw it, what was in it today, and it's just more crap. I mean, it's more, you know, shirts and... Can of spinach. For your guns. Can of spinach, yeah. That, to the, that people were pissed this week because they gave... Um, they gave you fifty percent off baits. Like who? Who gives? Who? Who even hunts with a with bait in the game? <laughs> I will say I mean, though, it's just I did. Ridiculous. I did just upgrade my moonshine shack to the bar using one of those like half off roll items or whatever, and it was a lot less expensive. It was a lot less of a ding to my uh, cowboy wallet because it was half off to get the bar in my. Some of it's shack. nice. Yeah, some of that some of that stuff is nice. Well, and the, like, the stupidest thing that we did uh, that was a lot of fun was get drunk in the moonshine shack. I wish right now for the and video version dance I and could hug cut each other. to that video. I wish I wish I had that video that I could cut to, but I just don't. <laughs> but to that so, point, the same thing was the. In, you remember in, in Grand Theft Auto Online when we one of the the. the most fun times we had was when we went into the nightclub and danced and we just thought it was so funny and our wives all come in and are like what are you guys doing dancing in a nightclub and we're like yeah <laughs> we're online together <laughs> dancing in a nightclub and we thought that was so funny uh, and then same thing with Red Dead or you know we jump on there and, and get drunk in the moonshine shack and dance and slap each other and hug and it, we had a great time it's still one of my favorite memories of Red Dead Online I think so, the point of it is, question. though, you have to make your own if fun. If you could take, oh, sorry, um, if you could um, make, if you could pick, if you could take one aspect from all both games, and like make the make your perfect game. So like um, the the story, the certain aspects from online, because like for example, for me, if I could have the first story in Red Dead Two. In, the, in that world with the new graphics and all that stuff and Mexico opened up, I think I would choose that. And as far as the online, I would take the gang matches that we used to absolutely wear out in the original uh, and put that with the open world that they have now. Because it would be something that we could do together and then something that if we wanted to play by ourselves, we could get on and you know muck around. Um, that personally would be my choice. And having a little Mexico in there. I hope they open up Mexico, but that that's kind of my feelings on that. Now, it's funny because I, I thought of this the other day and I was going to text you guys, but I was like, no, since we're doing this podcast, I want to do it right there on the podcast. I don't know why it hadn't occurred to me, 
but it just hit me. I'm like, what if they released an update? Like a, maybe even a paid update for Red Dead 2. And it was Red Dead Redemption. The, the whole game. Like remastered? Yeah, like because basically, and, and I'm not a game developer. I don't know how difficult this would be. But it's basically on the same engine. There's, there's a few additions to it. It's obviously been upgraded a little bit. But they've got the entire game, the entire map from the first game, and the entire map from the second game. It's all there. And it could be kind of... And, and again, they'd open up Mexico. I know Todd has researched the uh, the glitching into Mexico. It's there. People can get into it. It's not like it's just off in the distance. It's actually in the game. If they just released the Red Dead Redemption DLC and you could play the entire story in the Red Dead 2 engine, uh, you know, and maybe even this was this was icing on the cake, I guess, because of my 100% thing, you could, your, your John progress would carry over so you wouldn't have to start from scratch with everything. You'd have your money. You'd have your, you know, whatever. And that's that might be too much. But uh, basically, would you buy an expansion that just gave you Red Dead in the Red Dead 2 engine? I would. Uh, it's a definite for me. If yeah, they yeah I, de- I definitely I would. would. I'd pay full, I'd pay, you know, 50, 60 bucks for it. And that's, I, I don't yeah. know what it would, because that's the only thing I think it would, it would be more than they could do for free with, you know, counting on microtransactions. I think, again, I don't know. I don't know how hard it would be to, to kind of switch it from a previous generation to the next. But I mean, to me, it seems simple enough that you're not starting from scratch. All that stuff's there. You're just filling in the story content because all that stuff's there. Um, right. But Again, I'm sure there's a lot more involved, but I, I just thought I was like, man, that would be really cool to play Red Dead, the the original Red Dead story in the Red Dead Two engine, and even you know, wander up to Saint Denis because why not? There might be some new stuff added there, not anything great, but you know, just little things here and there that you could do that you you know you didn't have access to it in the first game. Um, so I think it would extend that life. And again, Rockstar's not having to go back and hire new actors, write a new story, mocap everything. You know, you're just kind of putting a new fresh paint of coat, fresh coat of paint <laughs> on something that's already there. Uh, so rather than do a remaster and, and print up new copies, just do it as DLC. People have already got the game. And Anyway, maybe I should get a job with Rockstar, but... Maybe you should. Did you hear that they just bought a new, um, or they, uh, they, it was some, uh, I can't remember what the name of it. They've, they've renamed it the Rockstar Dundee. Um, it was a new, uh, uh, like office, of uh, developers that worked on some games and stuff. I think, you know, Michael's shaking his head. Um, they, they purchased it for new content. They're going to be making new stuff. So I don't know if that's, they're going to be working on it. Uh, like an experimental just, lab thing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what they're going to be doing with it, but they did just expand and, and purchase that company. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if they're fans of The Office or if they're from Australia, but Dundee was the naming of the company. Rockstar Dundee. Mm-hmm. Dingo babies. I, I knew that was coming. Alligators. Well, in the interest of not boring people that don't like Red Dead to death, let's let's push towards the end here. I know you brought up the question of if you could make your perfect game. I'm putting you on the spot, Todd. You got to pick right now. Are you Arthur or John? John. Michael. Yeah, John. Well, actually, no, Arthur. I changed my vote. Change my vote to Arthur. What about you? you been? It's it's got to be John. I think uh, I was already again nostalgic, uh, like Todd pointed out. Really enjoyed the first game, and going back through and doing the 
100%, you know, as John, I completed the story. Uh, so I was, I was John. Spoiler alert for Red Dead 2. Um, I went and completed it as John, and I don't know, it just, it, it kind of re-sparked the old flame that I had for John. I was like, and, and it was like, I feel good knowing that in this game, John lives out his days on his ranch at Beecher's Hope, and just, and just is, you know, he, he's happier, and, and we can pretend like Red Dead never happened, and he can just live there and be happy for the rest of the, you know, it was nice to have that kind of come back, that I could finish the game and do whatever I wanted as John, not the far inferior Jack Marston. But yes, Jack is inferior. However, Arthur is a much deeper character, has many more layers than John Marston. If I'm talking, if I'm talking purely on the John Marston from the first Red Dead Redemption release. Now, if I add in the other layers that you see of John in the second game, it's much closer. And even though I'm going with John, I still loved Arthur. I, I, I Todd and I talked oh, about yeah. this not too long ago. When they released like that first gameplay, or, or I forget what they called it, the first like trailer for Red Dead Two, and there's Arthur like, and I think he's like sipping out of a, like a ladle, and he's he's getting ready to shake somebody down for money. Just from the second I heard his voice, I was like, this guy is despicable. Like I, I was like, I'm not gonna like this character. Like I like John. Because he he just sounds like a nasty guy, and I'm I'm not gonna have that connection to him like I did John. So I was surprised that I did feel, I at a certain point I was like, wow, I I feel as emotionally connected to this character as I did John. It got I think they got right up neck and neck for me, but it, John just edged out just a little bit more because ultimately I've spent more time with John, and I don't know I I just. For me, it's the... Dem- oh, go ahead, Todd. Did you say something? I wasn't saying anything. Oh. Uh, for, me, for, for me, it's the demise of Arthur, where he didn't do anything to, to exit the game. It was totally something that he did not bring upon himself intentionally that ended up doing him in. I've wondered if you could, could do... You- if you could skip that... And, uh, and and then he wouldn't get infected. Uh, but I'm sure there's no way around it. The game will, will probably stop you and you have to go do that mission at Downs Ranch. Well, if he, had, if he had worn a mask, we wouldn't have any of these issues. It's true. He got right up in that guy's face. Could you argue, though, that that was a, that was a bit of a karma, though? You said that it wasn't his fault, but, I mean, he was shaking down an innocent guy. for. It's hard to say that it well, wasn't his fault. But I think getting uh, TB is not was not his fault, but doing that bad action was his fault, I guess. Because if you remember, he didn't yeah. he and I forget who gives him these these gambler these, like debtor missions that he has to go collect. He Arthur Strauss. didn't want to do it. He's yeah, like, yeah. why do we keep doing it? Because he knew it was a racket, and it was you know it was like this. He and Arthur was not on board he's like i've told you not to you know he, he he didn't like the fact that this guy kept doing that um but then ultimately kind of like we talked about with john he would just go do it anyway um so but yeah so i guess he he didn't like the idea of it but he also liked money enough to <laughs> go get in somebody's face who ultimately had tb yeah. well in the in the long journey that arthur takes at the near the end of the game where he's riding back to the camp is uh, really interesting. Although it's the same thing that happened in the first Red Dead, so I liked both of those. Though I I remember when when you in the in the first Red Dead when you hit that moment where you can go home and, yeah. and that song starts playing and it's I gotta tell you that it was, like I was singing that song earlier today like in the house by myself because <laughs> it stayed stuck in my head. Um, but he's on his way home and just like. I don't know, I'd never really played a game like that where I was actually playing and there was a different soundtrack to what was happening. It was good, good, great use of music. Yeah, it was awesome. So when it happened again, I didn't feel slighted or, or you know, that it was it was just a rehash. I felt like, and I, I liked that. And they did a lot more with the music in Red Dead 2 as far as, like, being dynamic, um, kind of interjecting things here and there. It happens a few times in Red Dead 2. But uh, I, I don't know, I like both those those big, like... 
epic long rides, you know, putting it on like the cinematic camera or whatever. And I don't know, those were just cool. So, so I think we've hit a good, good spot. What's the better game? One or two? Online discluded. Discluded? Yes. I can't, I can't say conclusively one or the other. There's no way. Ben? I... This is a hot take. Here it comes. So get ready. <laughs> Red Dead 2 is, is the better game. Wow. I think Red Dead 1 is better by far. By far. By far. No, Red Dead 2 is a slog for a good portion of it. Yeah, there, there, no, there is a there is a lot, and I think that's why I, I think I'm going bang for your buck. It is one of the longest games I've ever played, but there are only a couple times, even when doing the hundred percent, that I was like, okay, I, this is bad. And I was talking to Todd about it recently. The, the there's a a whole little taxidermy thing that you can do, where you go and you have to get perfect small animal carcasses and send them oh. off. And it's it's blind luck, just like the gambling challenges that you have to do are blind luck. There's one of the gambling challenges that is like, you have to win three hands of poker in a row. And, and I, forget, there's, I think there's another stipulation. And there's, there's another one that, with blackjack, that you have to beat the dealer after hitting three times in a hand of blackjack. And it's like, why? It, it, it's blind luck. Yeah. It's blind luck, and it, and it just took so long. And that was, uh, and Todd told me that was why he did not do the one hundred percent was because he didn't want to do all the gambling stuff. Um, but there were a few times that, yeah, but I think just overall, because there's still so much stuff I could go back and do in Red Dead Two. Um, they they really put. I think they really thought that through as far as like. You can do this list of things for the hundred percent, but then there's still more you can do. And I don't know. Uh, if Rock, if Rockstar's listening, bring back Liar's Dice. Yes. Oh yes. Oh, if that if that's the big thing that they do at the end of the year, I'd be more than happy if they just add in Liar's Dice so we can get all out of play Liar's Dice. Yeah. Do it. I pay fifty dollars for it. <laughs> <laughs> because. Everybody listening to this podcast, I'm sure knows we actually started playing Liar's Dice in real life as a result of playing it in Red Dead Redemption. So, and we have taught it to multiple <laughs> yeah. groups of people. Yeah, that's we true. really enjoyed it. So, yeah, I, I was very disappointed to hear that, and it's probably some historical thing that it's like, well, the first this game known under these names was not discovered until 1906, so <laughs> it can't be in Red Dead Two. But you can become a bunny. So instead of <laughs> Liar's Dice, become a bunny. <laughs> God, how much are you going to grind for your next can of corn? Say that again. How much are you going to grind to get your next can of corn from Rockstar? Well, I know where you can go to get it for free and just go into the house and get it. Um, but I, to answer your question, pro I'll probably, I've already got a, like a 60 some day daily challenge, uh, streak. Um, and I just turned in a full load of collector's items that everyone that you can get, um, and made about close to 10 grand. So for, for hobby submissions for Todd, send your emails to dshad at gmail.com slash to be specific. The podcast, not the Twitch stream. Just so we're specifying, since there's some gimmick infringement going on. Yeah, just yeah. throw that out there. Speaking of collecting, collecting on some debts, we're gonna have to send somebody to break somebody's legs. Um, <laughs> however, going back to the grind, I I do have to admit that I have a I think a nine or a ten day daily challenge streak now because Todd has converted me over to. The grind, however, it is what I hate most about games now. Because as 
a husband, as a father, <laughs> just as a as a man in his mid thirties, I don't have the time anymore to grind. And I also full time working man. Yeah, I don't have the the disposable income to be like, well, I don't have the time, so I'll throw money into it, more money than I already have. I'm not so I. I I guess maybe I'm in the target demographic for microtransactions because I don't have time. But I also, I got to buy diapers, man. I'm not going to throw $25 into Red Dead Online for gold so that I can, you know, get the new Outlaw Pass. I just can't, I can't justify that anymore. So I think to me, microtransactions and grinding have just kind of killed games in a lot of ways for me because for me, games are a release. They're, they're, stress release they're fun they're they're a fun hobby when it becomes work like if i want to get something and i have to i'm gonna have to spend eight hours doing the same thing over and over every day it's it's like i gotta get on the line and do my chores you know i don't want to do that so that that's for me that's it's a big off-putting thing if i'm a betting person i think red dead redemption 2 is going to be the last great single player fully encapsulating game you don't think rockstar will put out another not as good even on the next generation console yeah i don't think so because well and the talent that they've lost writing talent it's just not gonna be as good you've heard it here first hot take michael says gta mark it down trash oh wait i gotta do it backwards there we go (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well how do you guys feel do you feel like we, we we've done a, our our podcast listeners justice i feel I that don't care red dead online is trash <laughs> trash i think you're trash <laughs> specifically your fantasy football team it is trash Well, I, 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 I have a sneaking suspicion that he's going to pick up his first win of the season this week. Because he's playing Because you. he's playing me. <laughs> Who is number one in the league? I am number two. I am not. I think I'm number three. Number one is the auto-picking Corey Matt. Uh, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> Computer vision. Yeah, I can't I, be bothered. I, when I saw the matchups this week, I, and I had just finished giggling to myself and my wife was like what are you laughing at it's like michael's fantasy team is just awful and he's like he hasn't, <laughs> he hasn't won a game and he's so and then that week ended and i see the matchup for this week i was like well just by virtue of what i said before this week i'm going to lose to michael this week and i know that's going to happen because i put it out there that his team was so bad so michael you're about to get your first win uh well at least I won't have to grind for 30 days just to get it. Actually, Yahoo has introduced that to the Fantasy Football League. That If you want to, to it doesn't matter where you finish anymore. If you want your draft pick, you're going to have to get on and do mock drafts every day for 28 days straight to get a multiplier. If you, if you capture Tom Brady's arm, we'll give, we'll give you the fourth pick. But you also have to hunt down a pig and skin it so that you can wrap the ball. And yeah, it's 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 a whole thing. So, well, Todd, it's been a pleasure. Even though you said that I'm trash, just so you know, this will be the lowest rated podcast in the history of GChad because of you. Well, it's because I, one of your listeners is on here, so that's one less <laughs> listen. I can't believe you're not going to listen to a show that you're on. I mean, I might give it a listen while I'm He's mowing gonna or something. He's going to listen to. It. Well, I had a pleasure uh, being on here um, while I had fun. I don't know that I'll do it again, but I did enjoy it. Well, you're not invited back, so that's all for you. I enjoyed having you. However, we will only need you back when we need your level of expertise in something that you are as knowledgeable in as you are, both Red Dead Redemption and Red Dead Redemption 2. So you're going to have to learn some other things. If you want to come back on the podcast. It's your podcast. I thought it was both of your podcasts. I'm, I'm, we've got a power struggle. I'm just, I'm just talent. 
I'm an independent contractor. I did not claim ownership. I said the podcast, not my podcast. He uh, Ben also saying? has another podcast called something. That is false. Something corporate. It's true. Look it up. Well, this was a garbage ending, so we're going to cut this out. <laughs> well, plus, we can't end it until Michael signs off like he always does. But it's going to be extra confusing this time. I don't remember how I do this. You always say that you are someone. Oh, yes. Yes. Well... Todd sucks. He's the worst commissioner in fantasy football history. And I'm David Pumpkins. Any questions? And he's gone. Uh, That's it for this month's episode of Group Chat After Dark. Uh, You can find us anywhere that you listen to podcasts. If you've listened to this entire thing, you probably already know that. But uh, as we get a nice plug there, from the Todd, for those of you not watching, he's drinking out of his Ride That Donkey Productions mug. Visit RideThatDonkeyProductions.com for all things wonderful. And you can also visit ToddSucks.com <laughs> because I own it. <laughs> Do you have anything you'd like to podcast. offer? What's that? So that's your other podcast, how much I, I suck. I don't have another podcast. But that is good to, to have a podcast about how much Todd sucks. You already have the domain. Something to think about. Anyway, Todd, we want to thank you for joining us. We want to thank our not sponsor, Bombas, for not sponsoring the show and not offering a promo code for any discount. And we'll catch you next month on Group Chat After Dark. Peace out.